Hi everybody, this is Coach Joe and we're out here at the National Training Center in Bukit Jalil in the uh, National Sports Council of Malaysia with uh, my very good long friend uh, Coach Ari who is the national karate coach here for the Malaysian uh, National and Olympic team. And we're doing a trial today, we're talking about micro-loading. Now remember 10-12 years ago when we were first developing Exigen, we actually yeah. did this with the biomechanics team here. We did a full assessment on how much load in progression actually starts to affect technique. So what we're gonna be doing is we're repeating that now with some of our new equipment to try and give people an understanding of exactly how little load it takes to affect technique. And I don't think most people understand that because you know we use dumbbells that are one, two, three pounds, cables, whatever it is. And, and, and we don't realize that even that little load, what we think of light in the gym is already causing issue in technique. Naturally, we do not want to disturb the uh, techniques. The coordination has to be at the most optimal, and uh, we do want to uh, improve and get a better output maintaining the coordination. Yeah. So, uh, I believe that's, uh, that's why we are doing this test for. What load is enough as a training aid? What load maybe enhances performance? And what load do we start to see the athlete compromised in technique? It's really important to understand that. And so we want to capture it on film because most people won't, wouldn't believe it's somewhere in about 100, 200 grams. So we have one of our national uh, athletes here, Shafiq. He's a uh, young up-and-comer, 20 years old, and he's going to be doing the trial with us. And we're literally just going to work through that profile on a, on a Jordan punch, yeah? Jordan, single Jordan punch. Single Jordan punch. All right, well, let's give it a try. We're going to start now. We've got 100 grams uh, loaded on the full arm sleeve. This is one we use a lot with combat just because we do a lot of loading through the full arm. We started out proximally because it's safe and he's going to be working two or three reps on that just to see how it uh, affects his technique. And also even if you think you see it a bit faster. One more time, one more time. Okay. How does it feel? Same. Same. No, 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 it's not, it's not bothering you at all. Is it hard or easy or just the same? Just the same that we wearing the sleeve. Just without the sleeve, with the, with the 100. Okay, coach, same, you don't see anything? All right, let's go up. Now the other thing I'm doing, I'm alternating internal and external loads just so we don't get any rotational effects. And if you don't understand that, check out our video on internal and external rotation. So now we're at 200 grams, loaded approximately close to the shoulder on that bicep. Go ahead. He's quite a strong athlete too. Yeah? Okay. How's it feeling now? A little bit heavier. A little heavier. So now he notices the weight. First one he said I couldn't feel the difference with just a normal sleeve, but now you can feel the weight there, but you're able to tahan. You can still do your technique okay? Yeah, um, Joe, what I see is he has reduced his extension on the arm. Reduce. Reduce. Reducing extension. Yeah, so... Uh, in the, with the 100 grams, uh, his technique uh, looked normal. Yep. And now with the 200 grams, uh, his extension of the arm is shortened. It's short. And well, that's critical because, as you know, in full contact karate, that last inch yeah, yeah. is a winner. So yeah. we're already seeing a change in technique. I want you to do it one more time, listening to what Coach said, and concentrate on the extension, full extension. See if you can compensate. These guys are fully warmed up. Don't try this at home. He's able to do? Yeah. Yeah. So he's almost in control there. now, yeah, right? He's yeah. Almost there. Yeah. Just kidding. Just one more. Yeah, that one. Yeah, he got, yeah, yeah, got yeah. it. So okay. It could also be because of his awareness. Yeah. His awareness and he's trying to do some compensation by himself. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, if he maintains his 200 grams and uh, does a full extension, uh, knowingly or uh, pushing himself to do it. 
then uh, then we should see uh, better progress. Well. Right. So this this now to me looks like we're already getting in the yeah. training weight. Yeah. This is a weight because we gave him a cue and he yeah. was able to adjust, yeah. but yeah. he is being challenged yeah. now. Yeah. So this is we're already seeing the first level of what we call a training load, and that's somewhere around eight ounces, which is kind of crazy. So now let's push it a little bit. We're gonna go to add another 100 grams. We're gonna go on the forearm. I'm just gonna go at the, we'll keep it on the front. Still a bit, right, it's proximal to the elbow. So that's 300 grams, which is for a 12 ounces. Okay, give yourself a little rest. Your first one, because this is heavier, I want your first one just to be not full speed. Just feel it first, okay, no injuries. I can see something. I'll ask you in a second. Okay, a little fast now. You're okay? No more. But no more. Yes, sir. One more. One more. Uh, first, how do you feel? Feel happy. Seven thank you. Yeah. Sankut, you're stuck. Yeah. Sankut, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sankut means stuck. But he's saying he's feeling a bit stuck on extension. More than the last one, too. What are you saying? And I, I saw a very obvious uh, distance. He has uh, probably, because of the inertia, he has traveled a little further. He's using his body to get extens distance now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, what, I'm, what I mean is, because the body is now heavier, yeah. and when you generate force, it doubles. Oh, he's... Yeah, you know, 200 grams will be, uh, of course, it would have been doubled or even three times more when you uh, move. So that weight is actually causing, you think yeah. it's stimulating the legs so, to use, to, to excel Yeah, now we, we, have to, uh, we have to study again a few more times and yeah. understand whether, uh, is it purely just because of his inertia is moving in a... a, 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 a my, the distance that, that he has covered, it's not. It's only upon completion of the technique. Yeah. Not uh, during the technique. Yeah. During yeah. the technique, yeah. the distance is the same. For anybody in is traveling further after you completed the technique. This is this is highly technical stuff. These guys are off to the Asian Championships tomorrow in Tashkent, uh, Uzbekistan. Tashkent, uh, Uzbekistan. So these are high-level athletes with very technical requirements. But I saw, I saw the shoulders stop. I saw the rotation of the movement stopped. And sort of like you said, Sanko, it's stuck. You're not able to, it was stopping short, right? Let's go to 400 here. This is a heavier load. Same, start slow. And then, laju, laju, laju. A bit more speed, a bit more speed, a bit more speed. It's okay. A little faster. If I went fast, I almost stopped. How? How does that feel? A little bit heavier than before. A little heavier? Can you control or is this out of control? You can, can control. You can still control. Coach? I think yes. Uh, in the technique itself, yes. Travel a little further than the previously. Mm -hmm. So, uh, meaning, when, when the, the weight is uh, 100 grams, probably he's quick to end the technique. Mm. Now, because the weight is 400 grams, so we can see a significant uh, difference in his distance of uh, travel before the technique ended. Mm -hmm. So now he's traveling further. Mm -hmm. So, uh, technically, I feel that uh, if with this weight, then we can improve, improve on, the, on the technique itself. Well, let me, let's do one more. I want to add one more. We're going to make this, we're going to now really stretch, really put some, some uh, emphasis on this movement, okay? We're going to put it down low, make sure it's snug on there. But it's comfortable, yeah? The yeah. system is comfortable? That's good. Okay, let's try now. And now, so for everybody, just so you understand what we're doing here, again, we started loading approximately 100 grams, 100 grams, 100 grams, 100 grams, moving down the shank, all right? And if you know your lever systems, you know what's happening to your inertia and momentum. And you're getting harder effort as you go down the arm. 
What I've also done now is I'm gonna really focus on that terminal side and I put another 100 grams at the back to give almost a ring. This is almost like what it would be like holding a dumbbell. So when you're out there as a coach with the, even just a one pound dumbbell, this now is about one pound on the whole arm. And you think that one pound dumbbell is, wow, it's great for speed and it's not affecting technique. I hope today you're getting a sort of a different thought on that. And if you're working with combat, whether it's boxing, MMA, full contact karate now, which is you know, coming to its own in the Olympics and whatnot, really have to think about the kind of loading that's specific in real sport movement. Let's try that. And also even the starting position, just wear his shoulder, because I'm starting to see the shoulder, the body sitting a little. The arm looks slower there. Yeah. It came up really slow, right? Yeah. 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 I, I wanted that, that's an observation. Now it's not speed. I noticed the legs moved, the arm stayed here, and the arm was all, it took, it actually took time to bring the arm up. Yeah. You can see that? Yeah, but uh, I have another viewpoint also. Uh, mm -hmm. There is, uh, this, uh, we can look at it as uh, this technique is altered now. Mm. It's a just, some adjustment, but the best part is the adjustment can be for the better. Mm. Because when you delay the arm a little, then you travel further. Mm. So a lot of times I find diff uh, difficulties to change all the techniques when the opponent, uh, when the trainees uh, would want to finish the technique so quickly, mm -hmm. so where they fall short of uh, distance. Mm -hmm. They so, start early, finish early, yeah, yeah. and short. Yeah, and uh, this is a game of, uh, game of speed. Mm. So uh, because of that, everybody wants to finish it fast, mm. and therefore falling short in distance. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we coaches have big problems in uh, trying to uh, change that to get better distance. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, in a way, uh, this, this uh, product and this weight in the arm can also help us uh, do some manipulation on Yeah, this yeah. Thing. Let me ask you, do you feel, was this slower now or faster? I mean, it's slower. You can feel? Yeah. Where is the slowness? Is it in the arm, the hip, the feet? Where? Where are you slow? Forearm. Forearm. It's pulling you down. Yeah. That was the one. So, so now the question is, okay, 100% we can see something's changing, yeah. right? And that's only 500 grams, which like I said, is roughly about a pound. Um, we can see it's getting slower. You're saying there could be benefit to that too. There's value in that. But what's important is micro loading is the concept of using very light loads, specifically for what you're observing here, is we have found, and this is now universal in all the athletes and programs we train, from sprinters to rugby players to NFLers to you know, high performance karate athletes, somewhere in that range of 100 to 400 grams will be what you would call a training load versus almost a disruptive load. So my question to both you now, I'll start with you. If you were training with this to get more speed, how much weight would you want? 500, 400, 300, 200, 100. Which weight do you think would be a good training weight? This one, maybe it's too heavy. Which one? Maybe around 300. Yeah, how about the, in the middle, 300. Yeah. Coach, what do you think? Uh, I, it depends on uh, what I want to achieve. Sure. If I want to achieve uh, overall improvement of skill in terms of a little bit of distance and a little bit of speed, then uh, I would also uh, go for 300. Yeah. Uh, however, I would also use so loading to 500 if I want to alter some, some other things. Yeah, and a heavier mechanic is going to actually work on yeah, technique. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, a heavy load. Yeah. So let's do this now just for fun. We're going to get you to do some nice, relax, free, fast. But again, first one, light speed, a little faster. How do you like it? Okay. Now we'll just see, now we're taking the load out and we'll just see uh, what happens. See if the body's returned. A little bit faster now. You kind of delayed it that one too, I think. Let's see one more. One more. Fast. Oh, 
Oh, God. How does that feel, no load? Again, again, again. Lighter. Lighter, yeah. Punch. Yeah. What do you see? I think uh, his system is still detecting the weight and uh, he has slowed down on his arm. Yeah. So, but the benefit is he's traveling for the even without the uh, weights. Maybe that's what I saw. Is I th I didn't know why, but he still looked like the arm was delayed. Still. Yeah. Yeah. So just so you know, the actual washout period to have that a speed effect, we were we went quick. It was only yeah. a minute. Usually it's about maybe three to eight minutes. You got to give a little more time. Yeah. But what's critical is. Uh, we'll, we'll let him sit for a minute and then we'll do one more. But again, just trying to understand a light load moving at high speed needs to be light. So if you're out there using tools that are measured in pounds and kilos, you're probably way outside the range of what the loading needs to be to be sport, movement, and speed specific. The so last one now, we're just going to see the potentiation factor. It's been a good four or five minutes. Let's see. Same. Slow, medium, fast. Yeah? Let you, let you, let you. Faster now, faster. Okay. One more, one more. Full speed. Pum. Some noise. Huh. Let's go. How was the last one? Yeah, speed. This is the system. Yeah. This is the So maybe that, what do you think about that combination? The speed coming back and the yeah, distance Yeah, I saw his arms were back to speed. Yep. Plus, I don't mean, uh, you know the effect of uh, putting the five, five, uh, 500. 500 grams. Yep. He just traveled the further distance. Mm. He's go, he got back the distance. Mm. So I'm not sure what's happening in his mind, but uh, I don't take a guess. Mm. But uh, the distance clearly is evidence that the distance is much further than, mm. than 100 grams. Would that be a good thing? Yeah. yeah. So it's funny, you're seeing positive change. Most important is today, if you're a coach out there listening to this, don't assess this on did we improve something. Today we're talking about microloading, and there's a lot of people out there and a lot of products out there using the term. What you got to understand is if you don't have the ability to progress in very light increments, then your microloading isn't effective for sport-specific movement, and this clearly shows it. So if you're in the game of speed, whether it's for combat, MMA, American football, basketball, sprinting, and you want to focus on speed in your sport, you need tools that are going to allow you to work through a range that's relevant. We can already see training loads around two, 300 grams at high speed. We see that almost universally. And once you get into four or 500, bigger changes happen. You spend all that time on technique, let's not screw it up. And let's keep moving forward.